welcome back to Spaced Out Radio's Cryptid Tales. My name is Amber Beckard, and today it's St. Patrick's Day. Yes, that is right. Happy St. Patrick's Day. And believe it or not, I actually don't own anything that is green. So the best that I could do is I am wearing my emerald necklace here, um, which is green so nobody can pinch me i actually managed to find something to put on today that is green there we go okay <laughs> so today in honor of saint patrick's day we are going to be touching on some irish folklore of the leprechauns yes that is right we are talking about these little mischievous creatures that we have come to love so much now of course it wouldn't be a leprechaun talk if we didn't even bring up some of the most famous leprechauns out there in the world. We all know um, Lucky from the Lucky Charms. I <laughs> grew up with that one myself. Um, of course, there is the famous horror movie Leprechaun, as well as, and I'm dating myself here of how young I am, maybe. Um, but I don't know if anybody else out there remembers it. There was a movie on the Family Channel back in like the early 2000s called Luck of the Irish. And uh, that is also kind of about leprechauns. So <laughs> there you have it. Also, I just completely remembered that I have green and an Irish tattoo. So... I guess I'm always wearing green and have a little bit of protection on me because it's a shamrock on my side um, that I love very, very much. So, ha! I'm wearing green all the time. Um, now, of course, these little teeny tiny creatures are mischievous as all get out. There is not a single story that does not involve them being nasty in some way. Of course, everybody talks about how leprechauns actually were shoemakers and that was how you could know that they were around, was you listened for the sound of their little hammers pitter-pattering away, beating the nails into the soles of the shoes. Of course, they also love to be a little mischievous in their spare time, so something had to come out of that. Stories about leprechauns date back to as early as the 8th century. Yes, the 8th. That's a really long time ago, if you think about it. Again, 21st, 8th. It is said that if you come across a leprechaun at all in the wild, it is important to hold on to them as tight as possible because they have to grant you three wishes in order to be released. That is also where it comes from with their pot of gold and their treasure hoarding as well. Now, you do have to be careful with what you wish for as things don't always go your way. There are many stories about people, um, one in particular, a guy wished to be told where the treasure was buried. The leprechaun told him it was under a specific tree, but he would need a shovel to dig it out. So he put a red garter on the tree to mark it as the one that he was going to come back to and dig underneath. Went on his way, went to get the shovel, came back and the leprechaun had covered every single tree in the area with a red garter leaving the man to not know which tree was the actual tree in the first place. So he was left trying to guess which tree to dig under. So when you catch a leprechaun, please make sure that you word your wishes wisely. Leprechauns very distinctively are always male. That is right. There is actually apparently no women in the leprechaun society. That is right. They are a strictly male dominated society. They are extremely solitary and it is said that they always are bearded and wear a lot of green and gold. However, they have been noted in some stories to be wearing shades of red as well. What that means, I have no idea. Maybe it's a hierarchy. They're also very known to wear pointed caps and also smoke pipes. So there's also that. Of course, most notably, the biggest and most 
well-known and accepted piece of leprechaun folklore is that they are known as creatures of morality and warding you into not being too greedy or overzealous with your wealth and just making sure that you are humble. You know, those get rich quick schemes don't always work. Now, and that being said, there are many, many, many tales of these leprechaun folk and the way that the Irish dealt with them. One of the most interesting I found was actually from Northern Canada, Northern Ontario, um, not quite Northern Canada, but Northern Ontario, where it was said that leprechauns actually showed up after they had all but disappeared in Ireland. After the last famine, it is said that the Irishmen got so fed up and angry with these leprechauns that they actually ate them. Maybe that was a way to survive, I'm not really sure. But however, these leprechauns then, who were left, packed up and moved over to Canada back during the early days. So that is where the stories of leprechauns in Canada actually come from, is that they migrated after the last great famine in Ireland. I'm really not sure where that comes from, but hey, if there are leprechauns here in Canada, come at me, I have some wishes, so <laughs> I'd really like to meet ya. That being said, if you guys have heard any tales about leprechauns in your area or leprechaun-like creatures, or you're from Ireland and you have leprechaun tales from your hometown, please leave them down below in the comment section because I really, really, really want to know. I would like to have a huge shout out to Ron Bumblefoot Thal for all of our music here on Spaced Out Radio. Of course, we appreciate you and your rock godness. You do amazing work with your music. Do not forget that you can check out all of Spaced Out Radio's archives on YouTube for free. So don't forget to hit that subscribe button as well as the notification bell so you can get notified every time I upload a video or every time one of the shows goes up on YouTube if you miss it during the live recording. Plus, you can now head over to the Space Travelers Club for $5 a month and join the forums. Talk to me, talk to Dave, talk to Everett, talk to anybody else that is part of the Spaced Out Radio team and have a conversation with us. Tell us your stories. We love to interact with all of our fans. You'll also get access to lots of cool things like the live chat during the show as well. So why not? Also, while you're over there on the website, please make sure you grab some merch from the Spaced Out Radio Vault because who doesn't want a t-shirt? That is it for me. Happy St. Patrick's Day, everybody.